Uh, welcome everybody. Today we got the pleasure to introduce Julian Longhi from the University of Segui Paris, uh, formerly Pontoise, just in case you might get confused. And uh, We'll be talking about exploring corpora with the Ramya text, so doing statistics with R and applying it to the text. This is one of his main research topics. Uh, well, as you might know, you should know actually, he's got a long list of publications, uh, scores of publications on uh, political discourse, media discourse, um, uh, studies at the interface of corpus linguistics and pragmatics. But uh, better not go into much detail here and uh, leave the floor to Julian. Uh, you can interrupt him if you wish any time to ask questions or we can leave questions to the end of the presentation. So Julian, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm going to, to present a, a specific software. Maybe someone, some of you know, it's a, a, a software, sorry, called Eramitech. Um, and I will switch uh, between uh, my PowerPoint and the software to show the functionalities. And uh, so feel free to interrupt me. And uh, if you want to, to ask uh, more precisions, um, feel free to to, to ask you to open your microphone or to I don't know if you write into the, the chat or do what you want. Um, so first I will present uh, the methodological and theor theoretical context of the statistics uh, applied to text and in particular uh, textometry. Uh, textometry is a specific um, research field uh, born in France in the 80s, as you can read, and uh, developed uh, techniques for the analysis of uh, a large body of text. It can be uh, political text, media, but also uh, uh, interactions. Uh, interactions, sorry, because I have my cat uh, turning around the, the computer. Uh, textometry is a kind of evolution of uh, another field of research called the lexicometry, uh, but it's, uh, it gives uh, more importance to text than to uh, lexical unity, units. Uh, and uh, it offers tools and methods uh, uh, that can be applied in different branches of the humanities. Uh, maybe uh, you can use it as an historian, as a sociologue, and you can uh, use this software to help you to, to analyze uh, corpora or textual data. But uh, today we are going to talk about a uh, more uh, uh, linguistic uh, point of view. Uh, if you want to have, more, to have more precision about that, you can go to this website, uh, Textometry. Uh, it's um, it's uh, a website linked to a big uh, research project uh, linked to textometry in Lyon, in France. And uh, you have lots of uh, references and uh, information about that. And so textometry is particularly relevant to corpus exploration in human and social sciences. And it enables to uh, have a detailed and global observation of different texts. Uh, you can also have a, a global representation of the statistics of a text, but you can also uh, go to search uh, details about a specific uh, unit, unity, and you can uh, uh, search uh, very specific information. Uh, and for social sciences, it can uh, highlight that the fact of language is an important observation field for human and social sciences, but uh, if you are linguist, you, you agree about that. But it's not always the case in uh, social sciences. Uh, so if you, if you want to sum up, textometry is an instrumented uh, approach to corpus analysis, articulating quantitative synthesis and analysis 
including text. Uh, you can see uh, Le Bar and Salem in a, uh, a very important book uh, they published. Uh, it uh, implements differential principles. Uh, one of these goals of textometry is to be able to compare corpora or parts of corpora and the results uh, that the software give are often linked to the comparison of uh, different elements. And these comparisons highlight similarities and differences observed in the corpus according to the representation dimension considered. You can have a lexical point of view, grammatical point of view, phonetic, prosodic, etc. And it can it, it establish contextual and cont contrastive uh, modeling. Okay. Uh, the specific uh, tool I will present uh, in Arbitech, maybe I can use uh, yeah, okay. Um, it, sorry, I mean to move your hand. Uh, the software offers a set of analysis procedures for the description of textual corpus. It was developed by Pierre Ratino in uh, Toulouse. Uh, one of its principal methods is Alcest. I will talk about that later. This allows a user to segment a corpus into context uniques uh, to make comparisons and groupings of the segmented corpus according to the lexem contained within it, and then to seek stable distributions. Uh, for example, uh, this method can help you to, uh, to extract the, the topics of, uh, of, uh, of corpora when you have a huge amount of uh, textual data and you don't know how to to deal with this uh, data, it can help you to, to extract some regularities that can help you to, to define uh, some uh, topics and thematics. In addition to the ALSES method, Iramutech provides other analysis tools, including proto prototypical analysis, similarity analysis, and word cloud analysis. <laughs> I will present that uh, just after. Okay. Okay. I can't move. Sorry, I don't know why. Um, so all these methods allow the user of, the, of this tool to map out the, dyna the dynamics of discourses of the different subjects engaged in uh, interactions. And the set of analysis, uh, more precisely, uh, can be defined as uh, these four um, procedures. Uh, classical lexicographical analysis, you can count and you can uh, explore corpora according to a specific uh, lexicographical uh, point of views. You can uh, analyze the specificities and correspondence with uh, factor analysis. You can have hierarchical descending classifications uh, linked to the topics of the corpora and another function called similarity analysis. Uh, if I can show you some uh, visualization. For example, that is a similarity analysis. It's a, here it's a more classical uh, lexicography analysis. Here you can have a uh, uh, hierarchical classification. So we're going to show all these uh, functions uh, during the, the time we have. And you, you can, uh, that is uh, just to, to do a metaphor with uh, concept of exploration because this software uh, don't give you the, the answer to, to, general, to, to general questions, but it's just a way to uh, help you to explore corpora and to do hypotheses, to test these hypotheses according to specific uh, lexical or discursive uh, marks. And after you explore how this uh, hypothesis uh, is, uh, is concretely uh, uh, good or not in your corpora and you can uh, uh, make interpretations and then uh, do other investigations but you always have to have to you always have an interaction with the software so it's uh, that's I think it's interesting in this uh, um, methodology of textometry it's a uh, it's not uh, uh, something like data mining or uh, um, deep learning or the, the tool do all the job, if I can say, and you have the results. 
Here, the result is uh, is linked to the interaction that you have with the, the software and the explorations you can make. Uh, here, I, I, when you click uh, with the right click of your keyboard, you can have uh, functionalities uh, for each word. For example, here you have attack, attack, attack and you can uh, explore how the, the, the name uh, or the verb attacked is, uh, is specific, is um, really in your corpora, for example, here, attaqué, attaquant, etc. So you can have interaction between the, res the results and the, the details into the corpora. Um, after the talk, if you want to have more information, you also have links. Um, I can show you on the website, maybe. No. Uh, because what is interesting with Iramutech is that it's really well uh, documented. And uh, oh, it's so big. Uh, OK, so you have uh, the website here. Sorry. Uh, so it's, it's in French, but here in uh, documentation, you have uh, uh, some uh, information in uh, several languages uh, here in French, but also Portuguese, Spanish, and here English. So we are, in my PowerPoint, the two links are uh, this uh, first web page. So this is a, it's quite uh, strange because it's a translation of uh, Portuguese. Uh, uh, presentation into English. So uh, sometimes you have a uh, Portuguese uh, <laughs> uh, text, but uh, it's quite funny. Um, so here but, uh, you have, uh, I will talk about that, uh, but for example, I, will, I, I took this, uh, this picture. So here you have uh, information, interesting information. And here you also have a very specific document about how you can prepare your data uh, to use this, uh, this software. So if you have problems that you have, if uh, it doesn't work when you try to do uh, after or when you when you have a research project, you can have a look at this uh, document to to help you to to build your your copper. But uh, I I will show you how how you can do. Uh, okay, so it, it is a, this is the website. Um, so um, I think maybe I can stay here for a moment. Um, no. I will switch. So Iramutech is a um, free software that provides you users with statistic analysis and text corpus and tables. Uh, and uh, it is based on the R software and on Python language. Um, in order to install it for free, you must first download and install R. So maybe some of you know R, that it's a more general uh, uh, software to do uh, statistics. Um, and in fact, uh, Iramutech is an interface uh, for R. So you can use uh, some functionalities of R, uh, but you don't have to uh, write or to code uh, some uh, script to do things. So you just have to click on buttons so that it's uh, it's really interesting for uh, human humanities and so or social sciences when you don't really have um, skills in uh, computer sciences or in uh, in uh, how you can develop uh, in computer scripts. For example, you can use this, uh, this software and you can uh, uh, use uh, air functions. Um, so to install Iramutech, uh, as I'm starting for uh, for the basis, I think it's uh, it's okay for everyone because uh, I don't know if you have already uh, downloaded it or use it or try to do it. So I, I show you the different steps that you have to do if you want to to start start from uh, from zero from scratch. So first, you have to install uh, the Air software. Um, so when you you can download uh, from other website, but when you are here, you have a téléchargement et installation, and here you have information about how you can uh, download everything. So here you have a, a, a web page to go to the Air project. You can click here, um, and somewhere here, here you have download, and you have lots of uh, different websites. 
uh, of uh, institutions that provide the air software. Uh, so you see, uh, I downloaded it from uh, this first uh, link, but uh, from Italy, maybe I think you have uh, Italy. You can go to uh, Milano or uh, Pado Padua and go here. And after you can download for Linux, for Mac, or for Windows. So I think it's really clear and easy to do to do that. So it's a, it's the first step. Um, what I saw uh, when I prepared this talk is that because there are lots of um, uh, regular modifications with Air. So um, when you you download Air, after you can uh, update Air packages. So you, in fact, you have to open the Air software. You choose package, the so the temp package and uh, update package. It is uh, it is in the one in the link I show here. So if you want to, to find it more precisely, but it's it's not really it's not really hard. You just have in fact to update Air, uh, and you wait a few seconds. And uh, you select OK, and you uh, you update your your software. So for uh, Air, it's OK. And after you can uh, download and install your tech. Um, so it's the same thing. You can go here. Here you have um, Hami Tech. You click here. Okay, you download it. Um, you also have to. Um, yeah, up, 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 up. Uh, to update Yamutech libraries, it's in the software, it's the same thing. And after you have uh, the Yamutech software on your uh, computer, for example, here, uh, for me, it's here, and you can open it easily. And so it's here, okay. And it's here, <laughs> sorry. And you have your, your software on your computer and uh, in general, it works and it's uh, it's no more complicated than, than that. So you can see you have three uh, linked um, tools. So Air, uh, Python and Lexic3, that is a, a kind of a dictionary that uh, have all the lexical uh, particularities of uh, French, uh, Italian, uh, Portuguese, and uh, that uh, helps, you, helps the, the software to uh, to determine uh, uh, the category, for example, the grammatical category of the word. Uh, things like that. Uh, okay, so here it's for the, the installation part. So it's not uh, it's really, really interesting, but uh, you have to do that. Um, I took that into the Hermitech tutorial. Uh, this, so this software provides the user different text analysis, simple ones such as a basic lexicography, uh, related lemmatization, word frequency, complex, more complex, uh, etc., etc. Um, and when you have this software, you have to prepare a corpora, and um, I, I prepare for, for this talk, for example. A, uh, Corpus about uh, Emmanuel Macron, about his talks uh, linked to the COVID. Uh, so this, the particularity of, uh, of this software is that you have to, to use uh, a TXT, a text format. So here you can see the extension of my file, it's a point uh, TXT. When you open that, it is like that. Okay, like that. So it's not, uh, you, you, you can't use, for example, Word or LaTeX or other files. It's just, um, just a text file. Uh, and I think it's, uh, where is it? Uh, um, okay. No. And you have your, your corpus. And your corpus after is segmented as a different text, group of text. For example, in my corpus, I have four texts, uh, four speeches of uh, President Macron. And after the software um, do a, a segmentation of this corpus with uh, unit unities that are about the same size to uh, do statistics. 
Uh, to prepare the data, I use uh, the document I show you so that it can be clearer for everyone. Here you can have this file. I can put it maybe in the chat. So if you want to, to have the link uh, in the chat. Sorry, commerce. Okay. So you have the link. Um, you will see it's really easy, but it's just you have just to to follow the, the methodology of the of the software. Uh, so the text can come from any source. So if you want to analyze a newspaper or political discourse or uh, interactions uh, with students or uh, social media, you can do everything. Um, uh, you have here in from examples. You can analyze just one document or a set of documents. Um, and a set of documents uh, can be analyzed uh, as a corpus. Uh, data files uh, have to be in particular format and saved in a particular way. That's what I say. All files must be plain text files saved with the uh, file name extension txt. And files should preferably be saved using the UTF-8 encoding standard. So when you download your document, in general, you have these uh, options, uh, the kind of document you can choose a TXT. And after you have uh, specificities of encoding and you can choose a UTF-8 or NC of other, other, other. Um, they suggest that you can use a notepad, for example, to, uh, to convert your documents. But in general, even with Word, you can uh, don download your document as a UTF-8 uh, TXT document. Uh, in this kind of corpora, you cannot have effects like uh, bold or italic. So if you think it's important for you to uh, to have this information, you have to think of a way that you can uh, uh, extract this information with another way, for example, with a textual mark, but you, can, you can't uh, use uh, this effect. Um, so you can have uh, two different uh, formats uh, the, that I will present will be without thematic variables, but you can also have with uh, thematic variables. Uh, so when you do your corpora, you, in fact, you have to use um, these little stars to, uh, to give to the software the information that it is uh, a text. And when you change your text, you have to do uh, to use uh, the four stars at the, uh, for another time. I will show you in my document. Here you can see for the, the first line, I have the four little stars. And after I add the, I have the different information about the text uh, that is just after. For example, here I have the author of my uh, uh, discourse. So it is Macron. If for example, I have other discourse with uh, um, Marine Le Pen, uh, François Fillon, I don't know. I will write uh, author and, and, uh, and Fillon, Le Pen, etc. And here I also have the information about the, the date. So here it is uh, the 14th of June. So here you can read, you can have the first uh, text. And here I have the second text of my corpus. So it's, it's still Macron, but uh, the date is different. Okay, and I, uh, if you can go here, I, don't know, up. I have the third. And maybe I have the last one. Here, yeah. okay. So it is really important to, to think about uh, what are the specificities of your corpora? What are the information you want to extract uh, with your research? And uh, what specificities you want to, to question 
uh, when you're doing this analysis. For example, in my case, that was about the temporal evolution of uh, Macron's discourse. So the, the information about the date is really, is really important because I have to compare uh, this, uh, this evolution. But I also thought about uh, comparing uh, maybe different authors of uh, discourse. So it's not the case for the moment, but if I want, I can add uh, in the same files other discourse, for example, from uh, the, the first, uh, the, the, um, the Ministry of uh, Education or the Ministry of Health or persons like that. And maybe I can, I can compare uh, how the French politicians are talking about the COVID. And uh, I won't compare the evolution, the temporal evolution, but I will compare the political dimension of their discourse. So it, it's important to, to have a, a vision of what you want to do with your textual data but also what you can do in the future and uh, in, uh, in, uh, in other research. Uh, I can uh, go, okay. Um, so that's, uh, that's an, uh, an important thing to because you're just you're not just using a tool uh, to use a tool it's a way to uh, to have to to ask questions to your corpora so uh, yeah i did this this corpus uh, to uh, to have information about the, the temporality of the of the covid but uh, if if it is if it's not interesting, you can delay this uh, this information because it's not just to be here. It it has to to be interesting for uh, for your research project. So um, uh, you have to think about this uh, metadata, and because it's uh, with this information that the software will uh, uh, make uh, will compute the data and will compare uh, parts of uh, of corpora. Okay, so um, you can see here you have uh, your stars and you are your uh, variables. So uh, here uh, my, um, that was uh, the author and the date for me, for example. And uh, you can have another uh, way with uh, thematics. So you have also your variables, but uh, imagine you uh, you have political discourse with uh, four or five thematics. For example, first it talks about economy, and after it talks uh, about uh, Europe, and after it talks about uh, uh, social. For example, you have three uh, three thematics, and you can, if you want, you can uh, uh, make a separation between uh, these thematics to compare, for example, uh, each thematic, or to compare the economical thematic uh, in Macron's discourse and in Marine Le Pen's discourse and so on. So it depends on what you want to do with your data and uh, what you want to compare. But it's a, it's a specificity uh, and you can, uh, you, you have this possibility to, uh, to include uh, thematic uh, information. Uh, here you have information about how you can uh, you you can name your uh, your variables, but it's in fact it's really uh, it's, it's quite easy. You just have to to give the name of uh, what you want to to extract, and uh, you give the, the, the corresponding name. Um, okay, so I, I will show you. So here you can see I have the file. Uh, the, the file, the txt file, and I will open the software and I, I will open the, this, this file. Um, I choose the English language here. Uh, I don't remember if, because, in fact, you can have it in French, but you also can have it in Italian. So, if you want to, uh, to use the Italian version, you will have the, the name of the functionalities in, uh, in Italian. Here I will uh, stay with uh, English. 
Um, and so here you have you you have this uh, red uh, button with a T as text, and in fact you can uh, open a text corpus. So that we do we do uh, open a text corpus. So here it's my uh, computer. I have my my uh, my file Modena. I have my corpus uh, Macron txt, and I choose it. Um, so here you have informations. So it's it's okay. It's a UTF-8 uh, file. It's in French. So the software detects the, the language. The text marks are the four stars. I use a dictionary. I make segments. So I, I think everything is okay. If, here you have uh, specificities to clean. Um, so if you use this. Uh, uh, as it is, it it uh, it delete all the specific uh, characters. But uh, if you have specificities in your corpora, you can have a look into that. And uh, for example, if 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 you want to to keep uh, question marks, uh, you can uh, delete here, and it won't uh, it won't be deleted. So if it's okay for me, uh, I click on okay. And you can see here it is computing my corpus. Uh, so here I have info, general information. I have uh, five texts. Uh, the software is doing segment, uh, text segments and it finds uh, this number of text segments, this number of occurrence, this number of forms, and this number of apex. So it's a general uh, view of, uh, of my corpus. And after that, you see you have new buttons that appeared uh, here. And in fact, they also are here. We won't see all the functions, but uh, lots of uh, these ones. Um, so you can use uh, the functions uh, at the same time with uh, these buttons, but also here in, this, in the menu. Uh, you also can see uh, here my corpus uh, is created here. So I am working in that, but also I have all the corpora I worked with uh, in the past. So if I want to to find uh, an old uh, an, uh, an old uh, research uh, in my computer, I, for example, I can go here and uh, I can uh, see that, for example, and uh, okay, it's. Uh, Okay, so we have uh, our Macron, and we can do the, the analysis I talked about. So the, I will present uh, in general so the classic, uh, classic lexicographical analysis. It can allow us to identify and format uh, te text units, turn into text segments, identify word frequencies, medium frequencies, apex and searches for vocabulary and reduce the world to their primary lexical units. Um, so um, maybe you're all linguists, so it's not a problem, but when you do that, you have the option of uh, lemmatization or no. Uh, if I say yes, um, I will have... Music. Um, you have three kinds of, uh, of words, active forms, supplementary forms, and apex, and you're in the total. And here you can see that it is uh, the limited version of the word. For example, here, jour. Uh, jour is, uh, if you have a look here, in fact, you have uh, jour with the plural mark and jour with the uh, without the plural mark. But here, it's a limited um, version. So it's more easy to have a, a general way of the um, textual data and to count the words. But it's, if for you it is important to have the distinction between the singular and plural, for example, you can do the same analysis without clicking on limitization. And you will see it's, it can be different. I hope so.
here it change. You don't have the, the same order because uh, you have other words. Uh, and here, for example, protege, it's just the infinitive uh, version of the verb. If I click here, I just have protege. And um, so it's a, uh, it's just to show you that you are not, uh, you don't have any obligation about how the software uh, uh, conduct you to to do to make choices. Uh, for example, lemmatization it's not uh, it's not a principle uh, admitted by everyone. You can think that it is important to limit limit limit. It's hard in English to make a limitization of uh, your corpora uh, because it's more easy to have a global interpretation because you don't uh, need to to know if the word is there is a plural mark or the singular mark. For example, for the verbs, for you, you don't have to know if it is uh, I or you or uh, our, but you don't. You just want to to know that it is uh, the the verb protéger or continuer. For um, example, if I click here. You have continué, continue, continueront, continueront, etc. So for me, it's, if it is, if it's not important to have all these details, uh, I can have a lemmatization. It's okay because uh, what? Uh, because I'm interested in the frequency of the verb in general. But if I am interested in uh, grammatical particularities or uh, enunciative uh, marks, for example, is it more subjective or more objective? Uh, can I see if a verb is used with uh, I or with uh, he or she, for example? Uh, you can not choose this uh, this way. Um, so here you can see when I click on the on the forms, I can uh, at the same time have so what is called associated forms. So it's a uh, the different lex lex lexicalizations of the of the verb here, for example, I have a prend, pri, prise, uh, and you can also have uh, uh, concordances. So it's uh, all the occurrences of, uh, of the word with this context. So what is interesting here is that you have. Uh, in fact, the word, of course, but you also have the uh, information about uh, the text, uh, and you can have a, a specific look at uh, where is it uh, more used, for example. And with that, you can uh, build a subcorpus. Sub so maybe if you want to have a specific uh, uh, view about uh, the word virus, for example, you can click here. Okay, and here you have a new corpus, which is just specific to the, the segments of Macron's discourse with the word uh, virus. And here you can have, so of course you will have a virus in first, but you have a protect, propagation, uh, took, and, and so on. So here it's a short corpus, so it's not really, really uh, useful. But when you have really, really large corpora, uh, it can be interesting to extract a part of the textual data according to a specific word. For example, if you want, if you have uh, thousands of millions of, uh, of words, you can uh, be interested in uh, extracting just a part of corpora uh, linked to uh, a word to, to see how, he, how, it, uh, how is it specific, uh, for example. So here it's the first uh, general function. It's not really, really uh, different than uh, other softwares maybe, but it helps you to uh, count and to uh, interpret your, your textual data. Um, the second uh, analysis is uh, specificities and correspondence factor analysis. And here it's much interesting because it helps you to compare uh, the, the text according to the characterization variables. Um, so it's, uh, I do it uh, with this order. So here we have the, the statistic analysis uh, and here we have this uh, specificity and you have it, specificities NCA.
And here you can see you have the variables that you uh, that were introduced into. I can ask the software to compare uh, my uh, my text according to the variable date or author. Author, it's not interesting because I only have one author. But if I had uh, two, three, five authors, I can compare uh, these authors. So here I choose date, and I say okay. So here you can see that R is uh, calculating. And here you can see a big table of um, the forms. Here you have uh, in this column the forms. And here you have the five columns of my five uh, text linked to the five dates. So here it's a calculation of the specificities of the text of the uh, 12th of March. Here, here this one, here this one, and so on. And um, you can see this, uh, this means that it is uh, linked to this, the, the classification is linked to this uh, variable. And for example, here, the word cell is really specific about uh, of the, the category uh, of the 12th 12, 12 March, because uh, you have uh, the better score of, uh, of the, all the columns. If I want to, to have the specificity of this one, I can do that. For example, here, the, the form 11 is the more specific, but uh, more interesting, maybe you have ED to help. It is more specific, it is really specific, for example. So this, uh, for example, the, the text, this text can be characterized by the word uh, ED, by the word semaine, uh, if I want to see this one here, you can see not. For example, the word not, so our, is uh, very specific of, uh, of this text. Oh, sorry, if I do that. So, for example, it's interesting because here, from a linguistical point of view, you have not. So, this text is, is characterized by uh, not, so our. But here, you have leur, so there, and you, you, you. So it's uh, from, from a, a discursive point of view, it's an interesting comparison because here is talking about uh, uh, a collective way, for example, and here is talking about people uh, without uh, subjective implication, for example. Um, so it's all the forms. You can have uh, specificities with uh, banal forms. So you may see uh, for here you have uh, prepositions, articles, uh, auxiliaries. You can have part of speech. So that it's really interesting because you can compare uh, corpora from a grammatical point of view. For example, here you have uh, demonstrative pronouns that are uh, specific here. Uh, here you can have uh, demonstrative adjectives. Here it is uh, possessive adjectives. So you can also, also characterize your uh, corpora and their specificities with uh, grammatical features. So it's from a, a discourse analysis point of view, it can really help you to have um, uh, considerations, not only about the vocabulary, but also so how the texts are, uh, have specific uh, grammatical uh, features. Uh, also, when you no, yeah, okay. When you click on a category, you also can have uh, other uh, information. For example, if you maybe it doesn't work anyway, um, I will try later. I don't know. Uh, you have other. So here, the first uh, columns are linked to the. Um, Calcul of specificities. So you can see you have plus and uh, or more, it's more or less. And for example, uh, um, something can be a uh, characteristic from a corpus because it is unused. So you can also have the, the characterization of text, but what is said, but also what uh, is not said in this corpora. 
Um, for example, um, try to find something. For example, in this text, uh, the word scientific is uh, is less used uh, than in the other corpora. So you can imagine that uh, it's uh, it's this kind of argumentation is not uh, done in this one, but in more in others. Uh, if you can here, and here, for example, today is is not really used in this uh, in this text, but more in uh, this one, for example. So it can help you to compare also what is present, but also what is absent. Uh, absent yeah, okay, in uh, in corpora, and that's uh, uh, really important in the philosophy of uh, textometry is that you you can compare uh, variables and the, the way that they appear, but, but also uh, how they uh, disappear from a part of corpora. And uh, sometimes it's significant to see that something uh, is, is not here. And uh, with your own eyes, it's quite hard to, uh, to identify the, uh, uh, if something is here or is not here. But here it helps you to compare the, the, this, uh, this criterion. Uh, you can also have frequencies, so it's not the same uh, calculation. Here it's also uh, it's, uh, more comparison, but here it's more about the frequency. And uh, what is interesting is that these uh, big tables that are hard to understand. Ah, sorry, I, I close that. Uh, sorry, I'm again. Okay. So this one, okay, is that you have you can have a graphical representation of uh, these informations. So the software compute all these uh, informations and give you a graphical representation. So here you can see it's a graphical representation with the forms, and here you can have this same representation about the part of speech uh, characterization. So here, for example, you can see that the, these two discourse of Macron were, uh, have great uh, proximities. Uh, these two ones were well, not so far from one from the other, but uh, here it's interesting, the last discourse of uh, uh, maybe, uh, 15, years, 15 days ago is really different from the others. So it helps you to compare the evolution of a discourse. And here you have the, the forms that, are, that characterize this uh, classification. So if you try to, uh, to combine uh, how you can read these two uh, graphical analysis, for example, here you can see that you have a strategy, the rough strategy that is closer than that. And from the two first discourse, you have uh, these words, for example. So in fact, it's a way to understand what I try to do here, uh, colon by colon. You can observe what is specific from a uh, discourse, what is specific from another, uh, what can be, how can it be characterized. So it's really hard to do that uh, manually. Uh, and so here, uh, how can I use that? Sorry, uh, I don't know how I can use that. Okay, so it's a it's a way to uh, to have um, um, a more uh, simple representation of these results, and it helps you to make comparison. For example, here uh, with uh, these five discourses of Emmanuel Macron. I can say that we have two uh, discourse really close, two others that I that can be have, in fact they have similarities but also differences, and I have one that is really really different from the others, and I can do that with uh, lexical forms, but I also can do that with the grammatical uh, point of view, and you can see here. What is interesting, it's about the same representation. Here you have these two discourses that are closed, 
Here, these two ones also are closed, but uh, the last discourse is always far from the others. That means that it is far at the same time from a lexical point of view, but also from a grammatical point of view. So it's a really different uh, discourse. And that can help me after, if I do discourse analysis, to, uh, to make hypotheses and to try to uh, understand why is it so different. So I can come back here, I can go here, and I can, I can uh, search information to, uh, to, uh, to understand this, uh, this representation in here too, for example. And I can see yeah, it's really, uh, we have lots of numbers, we have a lot of comparisons, uh, we have uh, indetermined uh, articles or adjectives. So it's, uh, you can see in this discourse that Macron tries not to, uh, to make uh, uh, personal, uh, to, to, to take it personally, but he tries to put it in a, with a distance, with numbers, with comparisons, and uh, without uh, giving a specific, his specific point of view, but just a representation of the reality with uh, numbers and uh, comparison with before, with other countries, and, uh, and things like that. Like that. Um, maybe I can show you if you want, uh, because I did, um, I did a paper about that on a website. Uh, yeah, so I made uh, after you can use this um, this uh, to to make interpretation. So you can see I gave a, a representation of the evolution of this uh, this corpora. Uh, here I was talking about uh, um, people in the hospitals in the French French people. In here with with more uh, uh, collective representation, we have difficulties. We have to to deal with that. And uh, here it's uh, more us. Uh, the beginning and the new things. So you can see the differences. But what is interesting with this software is that you can prove uh, your interpretation of textual data uh, with uh, comparisons that are made with uh, quantitative uh, analysis. Um, okay, so that was uh, the, the second um, uh, kind of analysis. So it's uh, really to compare uh, parts of corpora to help you to uh, to determine what is uh, specific of uh, of a part uh, from another. Um, maybe I can show I can show you another. Um, if this works, I don't know. I'll try just to. So if it's a good file, um, for example, it, it is um, it is a work about uh, terrorist acts, acts and uh, linked to a website where uh, uh, people doing uh, um, how can you say in English uh, well, kind of terrorist acts, but uh, linked to. Uh, more to political uh, events than to, uh, for example, radicalization or things like that, but more uh, internal uh, terrorism, you can say. Um, and uh, the idea was to uh, compare this, um, this text uh, from different point, point of view, from the website where they were, the, from the text where, uh, where, where uh, Return, but also the towns where the events uh, were done and the kind of facts, for example, if you something burn or something broken. Okay. So if I do with the towns, for example, I can have the, the same representation. But here we have uh, more, more and more text. Here you can see we have lots of text. So here it's uh, all the towns where there were events. And the idea was to work here with the authorities to, to help them from a textual point of view, if we can uh, re, uh, show similarities between the revendications of these acts uh, in the website. And for example, here you have the representation with the lexical forms. And here it's a, it can be a, a way to help uh, the French gendarmerie. For example, you have two, uh, events in Limoges and uh, Limoges-Jourdan, it's, uh, 
specific uh, part of the town image. And from a textual point of view, the two, uh, if the two texts are also closed. So if, they, if the authorities can do the hypothesis that maybe it's the same uh, group or in the same author of the event because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's closed from a geographical point of view, linguistics can help them to, to say, yes, it can be the case because from a linguistic point of view, the, the texts are also closed. Uh, and uh, so um, it, the idea, the, the goal here was to help uh, authorities to decide if some events can uh, be done by the same terrorist groups or uh, uh, persons, or if we can exclude uh, some of, uh, of these events. And we, when we do the, with the grammatical uh, information here, it's interesting, you also have Limoges and Limoges Dolans that are really close. So that can help uh, um, to determine that for these two facts, for example, it's, uh, we probably have just one, uh, one group or one author and it uh, can uh, conduct the authorities to investigate, not uh, to, to investigate, to search two, uh, two groups, but only one. Uh, conversation. Okay, it's not about the, the talk. Um, okay, so that was the, the second functionality to uh, to make comparison between text or part of text. The third uh, functionality is a method of descending hierarchical analysis. Uh, the text segments are clustered according to their vocabulary and distributed according to the reduced form frequency. Uh, it's quite technique. You also have... Uh, um, uh, I will talk about it later. But, so it's the third uh, button here. You can see the, the green one. It's a Reynolds method because it has been developed by uh, uh, a researcher called Max Reynolds. Um, okay, so you can click. You also have the choice to use a lemmatization or not. So here I can say yes. Here you can try to do it uh, with the default values and if it doesn't work, if you are more precision, we can change after, I will, uh, I will show you how. But here I will start here to with that. So I say, okay. It's running, it is profiling my, uh, my analysis. I know not in the good copy. It works, but I, I will do about with Macron because it won't be a, um, But it works here. Here you can see, for example, you have uh, five, five uh, classes. It means uh, five uh, thematics, topics uh, in your corpora. So here it's just a, a global representation. But you see here, you have other buttons. You can click on the second one. And with this one, you will have the words that are composing this, uh, this, cl this classes. So here you can see, uh, so here it's about the fire and uh, when people uh, put fire into uh, in places. Here it is about uh, animals, spaces, when uh, people go to uh, extract, extract animals from, uh, uh, from places where they are, not uh, well treated, uh, and so on. I, I just will do it with my Macron corpus because it can be more. Uh, this one, sorry. Oh, okay, not here. I do that. It is just calculating, it is using air to, uh, to compute the data. And if you think, okay, I have, so here you can see you have uh, the statistical information and you have the classes. So here in Macron's discourse, in the, all the corpus, the, the text, so in the five texts, we, uh, in a global point of view, have, have I, I, sorry, uh, four, four topics. And if you want to know more precisely what it is, 
you can see here, and you have the words linked to the topics. So it is important to, to say here that the topics are linked to the vocabulary and to the place of the vocabulary into the text segment. So it's just a static, statistical point of view. So you don't have uh, an intervention of, uh, of uh, semantics uh, categories or a semantic point of view. It's just from a statistical point of view. So it can, it can be an advantage or a disadvantage. It depends what you think about the, the, the treatments that you can apply to textual data. But uh, from, uh, from some point of view, it's interesting because it's a, it's a kind of objectivation of uh, what you can do with, uh, for example, here for political discourse. Uh, if you do uh, um, work linked maybe to uh, communication or to information sciences, uh, sometimes researchers extract the thematics uh, just with their own mind. They read something and they say, so the, the text of the corpus deal with uh, economy, with uh, uh, politics, with uh, something like that. But uh, they don't really have uh, uh, a quantification about that. So it can be maybe an intuition that you, you can uh, reproduce them to, to make interpretations and uh, with the projections of their, of, of their own uh, view of, uh, of these affirmations. So here it's a way to, to have a more uh, statistical representations of, uh, of thematics. And for example, here you can have all the topic about uh, uh, health and uh, difficulties with uh, COVID. Here you have all the information about economy. You can see uh, chômage, unemployment, uh, economy, uh, firms, and so on. So you have a, a specific part of uh, Macron's discourse uh, dealing with uh, economical uh, information. Um, and after you have to uh, make interpretations about the other the class. I don't know here. Uh, maybe here it's a more uh, uh, class more linked to solidarity and a specific uh, um, symbolic aspects of the crisis uh, with republic, volonté, compatriot. Um, and here, I don't know, sometimes you can't really uh, put a word or, uh, but, but in fact, it helps you to determine uh, the, the different kind of information that are present in, uh, in your corpora. Uh, what I said is that like you can move the, here. So here it's, it's about the size of the of the text segments. So in general, it's uh, this size are okay, but uh, sometimes you, if you work on specific data, uh, maybe you can uh, move. If you have, for example, really long uh, sentences, you can maybe move. But what is can be more interesting is this one because it can help you to have uh, uh, more precise uh, categories. For example, if you think that this category is really large, and maybe we can have two specific topics into this one. You can try to, uh, with another and higher number, like, uh, maybe 15, you can, and you do the same analysis. And you can see, because it will be with a statistical uh, point of view, you determine the precision of the, of the way that the, the software can uh, give you in the feedback of your data. It is quite longer because it's a more precise. Okay. Okay. So here you can see you have, for example, 10, 10 classes. And if you want to find the world, so sorry, sometimes it's hard to read, but you can see you are more precise, precise information. So you can find. Uh, in fact, it's not a different represent. It's not a different result, but it's a different representation of the same result with uh, more specific information of each uh, of each class. Um, so here, for example, you have the information about health, uh, these three classes. But here you have 
people who are sick, people who uh, work in the hospitals, for example. And here, what we have to do to uh, not to uh, to have the COVID with uh, uh, to respect the I don't know if, how, how you say in Italian. The, in French, it's just a barrier. You don't have to to check to check to, to do something like that. So you have here a very more precise uh, information, but maybe you can you can think it's uh, it's too specific to have a global representation of corpora. So as I say with the metaphor of the exploration, in fact you have to 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 do what is better for you for your analysis. If you want to have a global representation, this one maybe is uh, is okay. But if you want to have a really specific uh, analysis of a specific uh, topic, for example, health and how Macron uh, talks about uh, health, hospitals, uh, sick people, you can have a more specific representation. And here you have to, to check uh, where he, he talks about all these, uh, these topics and uh, how he, does he talk it differently. So here we just have a global representation with the uh, with the classes and the words, but of course you can um, come back to the data to uh, to analyze more precisely. So here you have the second uh, um, uh, here profiles, and you have uh, all the classes with the words and with uh, statistical information. For example, here, hospital is uh, the, more character the word the more characteristic of this class because it appears with a great percentage and his statistical score of the key two, key two is, uh, is very high, okay? So, uh, and uh, this one is high too and so on. So if you want to, to have more information here about uh, this world, you can uh, click and you can do other analysis. Um, I, won't, I, can, I can see all of this analysis, but uh, uh, for example, the concordance, so you can see the, the world in this, uh, in this cluster, in all the clusters or in all the segments. For example, if I want to, have the representation of the word hospital in the class four, I can choose that. And I have, you can see uh, all the, the way that hospital is uh, used in Macron's discourse. Um, more interesting is, uh, what is it in English? Uh, oh yeah, here, it, uh, typical text segments. It gives you the more typical segments of the class. So it's a really good way to extract the better examples of the class to understand what is uh, specific in this, uh, in this topic. So you can see in red, this has words about, uh, linked to the class, is uh, class four, for example. Um, okay. yeah. Um, so here, for example, this, uh, this first example has a really high score, you can see, the highest score on of all, and because it has lots of words that are really specific about this topic, about health, about hospitals, about uh, sick people, for example. So it's, it's also interesting because when you do discourse analysis, uh, it's hard to have uh, an objective uh, way to uh, extract uh, parts of corpora, to, uh, to make uh, quotations, to, uh, to understand well uh, what part is more specific and more representative from the topic, for example. So here, if you have to give an example of uh, Macron's discourse that is really characteristic about the topic of health and hospital, for example, you just have to go here and you choose the first uh, one, two or three examples and you have the really, really specific uh, examples of your, of your class. Uh, so you can do that in, every, in uh, each class. And here you also have a graphical representation, you can see. Um, so it's uh, about the same representation but with uh, other data. And here, for example, you can see that uh, 
these two classes are really close. And when you, you go here, in fact, you can see you have the you have this uh, this information here, and you have um, so you have this uh, lexical representation. Here you have the same thing about the grammatical informations, and here you have your uh, the data uh, put into corpora. So uh, maybe here uh, this one can be characterized by the uh, the purple uh, informations. Okay, so I'm going to show the last um, function, uh, the two last functions, but the last is very uh, simple. Uh, the similarity analysis is based on the graph theory and used, uh, often used um, for representation from uh, yeah, from representations because it allow, allows to identify co-occurrences uh, information at the same time of the word, so the frequency of the word, and the connection between different words. Um, so it is this one. You can see we, we have we talked about this one, this one, this one. So now we are with a similarity analysis. So for the first time, I, I say always okay, okay, and I will show you. So it's not really easy to understand. So we'll uh, modify the, 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 here, the parameters. But here you can see you, you can have uh, the distinction of words. Some are bigger than others. So it links to the frequency. And we have links between parts of this word. So it, uh, it links to the co-occurrences of the words. It means that this word is used with uh, another word. But here you can see it's hard to understand because we have too many words in the graph, so we can't read it. So we have here a way to to modify its uh, edge uh, threshold here, and I can uh, choose uh, not to have the words with the frequency of one. So because it's too many words in the, in the graph, so I can choose, for example, here two. So the words without a frequency of two or more won't appear on the graph. But it's a way to, to have a, uh, something uh, clearer from, so I say, okay. And it will calculate the same thing, but with, with less words. Okay, and here you can see it's more easy to understand because we have uh, some words that are not present now. And here you can see, for example, virus, so the word virus is protégé, to protect, uh, mesure, prendre, prendre, you can imagine that it is prendre des mesures, government, uh, aller, and so on and so on. So here what is interesting is that you have a, a picture of, at the same time, the, the statistical um, particularities of uh, your data but also the links between uh, the, the lexical elements. Uh, you can also use uh, other functions here when you go here. So I say also two. You can see here the score is calculated according to the co-occurrence uh, point of view. If you want, you can change and have other mathematical uh, functions. Uh, I don't know all of them, uh, but uh, co-occurrence for me is okay because it's a good uh, way to explore corpora from a linguistic point of view. And here you have two things you can check, uh, communities and hello. Now first I will, I will say, I will uh, try communities and you will see. It's a way to, uh, to Christmas, uh, Christmas picture. So here you have the same representation, but the software helps you to make the distinctions between kind of clusters that are close from uh, the, the co-occurrence point, point of view. So here, for example, you have words that are uh, usually used together in the corpus. And it's quite clear for salary, firm, uh, unemployment. So here you have a specific uh, 
cluster linked to economical uh, issues. Here, it's linked to Europe, France, and uh, maybe political way to act. And you can uh, do the same thing in the last time for me uh, too. You can click on communities and also on hello. And it helps you to make the distinctions between these communities. And it's even better. Okay, so here you can have uh, specific clusters of your corpora but linked to uh, not a uh, thematic point of view like in uh, Alceste, but here from a co-occurrential point of view. So uh, uh, what are the most frequent words in your corpus and uh, how are they linked together? So here also it's a way to, uh, to make a, a, a global representation of your data. Uh, but uh, I insist with uh, linguistic uh, information because sometimes when you see word clouds or uh, uh, data representations, you it's more aesthetic than uh, linguistics. And here the idea is to to, to determine that the links are. Uh, you can see, for example, the links. Uh, bigger is a link and the bigger is a co-occurrence association. So if you have a big link uh, between two, for example here, this one is bigger than this one, that, makes, that means that uh, between a hospital and a personnel soignant, the link is really strong, so you have many co-occurrences uh, between these two. Uh, and the last function, it's going to time, it's a word cloud, so it's more uh, I can say a gadget uh, just to, to make a, a picture of corpora, but it can be interesting if you want to present uh, uh, in one slide uh, the particular specificities of, uh, of a pro research project. Or... So here it's not really uh, a cloud because it's uh, <laughs> yeah, too many words, many maybe, but uh, you have also um, here it's just a statistical representation. So the size of the word is linked to the frequency, but the, their position is not linked to the to the the, uh, the relationships they can have uh, into corpora. So it's just a way to have a visualization of the of the frequency of your word. And here, if you think you it's uh, too many words, you you also can. Uh, can change information. Uh, and for example, you can uh, unselect here. I can select all the world with uh, three. I can do it will do that and then I finish to talk. And so you can have uh, maybe a clearer. Uh, I, I won't do all because it's uh, ah no, sorry. I won't do that. But uh, maybe I have uh, no, I don't think I have a better corpus reader. Well, maybe here. Corpus about running, yes. We can do everything here. Yeah. kind of data. So if you're interested in running, you can uh, extract data from Facebook about uh, runners and you can see what they talk about. And of course they talk about running. <laughs> um, and okay, so this one is more uh, word cloud. You can see it's more, uh, uh, so uh, I didn't choose my uh, PowerPoint a lot, but it was the same thing. In fact, it was the same functionalities. Uh, I can see specificities, uh, okay. Similarity analysis. Oh, this one is linked to gastronomy. It's really interesting. It's a corpora of the uh, tweets of the ch uh, chefs with uh, two or three stars in a Mitch Michelin guide. And you can see uh, what ingredients they use in their when they cook and you can have a presentation of the, the evolution of the culinary tendencies in the French gastronomy. Um, okay, I told, well, you can have more details about the statistical uh, uh, dimension of that. You can go on the website of your Mutech or maybe I can share my, uh, my slides. Uh, it uh, explains how uh, the places, for example, are created 
uh, with uh, text segment uh, considerations and how it is uh, calculated. But it's uh, more technique, and, but uh, it's important to, to understand that. Um, so when you have a calculation and there is a key two, it's a corresponding uh, calculation. Uh, here was the same thing. Uh, lots of functions I see with the software, so what I did. And so uh, I think it's the end, so thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure there'll be questions from the, usually questions come in the chat. We've still got yeah. some time for questions. <laughs> well, I got a question. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's about the dictionary, because I've seen that in the setting, you always select a limitization and you yeah. keep, or you search for index words only. Now, if you go for words that are not indexed, what would you get? Uh, a word that is not indexed, uh, it will appear in, um... I can show maybe, I don't know if I, here we have, uh, I, I think sometimes it appears as a proper name because uh, I think the software. Yeah, I was procedure. thinking about that because yeah. there are all parts of speech here, but uh, names are not included. And to talk about names, you had the words like noun, veal, and what came associated with veal. So I was saying, thinking, so if you sort of go for unindexed words, you would also have all the proper names, right? Yeah, right. Uh, here, for example, you have the from France, for example, for, uh, but some some of the proper names are, are recognized are proper, as proper names because they are in the dictionary. But if you are other words that are unknown, uh, by default, it uh, treats that as the proper name. I think. Okay. Even if it's not uh, that, it's a it's a mistake of the software, of course, because. Uh, um, but I don't know what I don't know is if it if is uh, the dictionary is uh, open. I, think, I mean, it can be uh, it can integrate uh, new information, for example, from uh, other sources or not. Because I mean, to get all the names and index them, you should have an onomasticon that goes into yeah, yeah. The, into the lexicon. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good remark. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you can in, in, uh, here yeah. because sometimes it's uh, yeah you got some uh, Bergam is okay Bruxelles is okay but mm -hmm. for example I think there are names that he doesn't know that he considers as proper name so it's, uh, yeah, it's something uh, like to the anti COVID these things would not yeah. really be um... right yeah of course yeah. Mm. And the lexi the lexic that you use, is it like uh, built separately, like semantically organized, so you can go from the topic to the words that you're interested in, or is it any dictionary? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the beginning because I was just reading. Now you said you you use this lexic and you gave us examples for words that are indexed in this French dictionary basically but this lexic that you use is i mean is it something that is built separately semantic i mean a semantic dictionary or is it like any dictionary i mean you can include any dictionary in the software and it will... no no I, I i don't think you can uh, because uh, in the first uh, step when you open the um... Uh, the software you it it uh, I I uh, I thought about that it's linked with the Lexic 3 with the, the uh, specific uh, Lexic. Uh, it's not a Lexic based on semantics information, but more about grammatical information. So okay. it helps you to distinguish to to have the distinction be between the lexical forms and mm -hmm. to uh, to uh, I, I, gives the assignation about the grammatical categories. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, yes, it's a, uh, there are other um, tools like, so for example, TXM or maybe Hyperbase that are linked to other uh, 
part of speech uh, taggers, like uh, tree tagger, for example, that maybe has a uh, maybe more complete on who or, or is a but uh, yeah, uh, but it's lexic trials yes. uh, for for other languages. I don't know if it's uh, for Italian, for example. I don't know which lexic it uses. Maybe it's the same in another language. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, thank you. Uh, the question: How would you do from what to solidarity metaphor in mathematics? Uh, I don't understand. Is it about the question of metaphors in general, or uh... Uh, yes? If I if I may, on the one hand, we have the problem of the lexicon. Yes. So you have war metaphor, very prominent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Metaphor, and you have solidarity metaphors. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if you have your four or five speeches, yeah. you can analyze whether you know there is more war in March than in uh, October or more solidarity needed in October. The question is, how do we put these uh, uh, lexemes to, to, together and how do we uh, compare them later? Okay, okay. Uh, so we, uh, for, from a, um, a technical point of view, you can go in, uh, yeah, for example, in the specificities and have a look at, uh, for example, the, uh, exactly. Uh, so yes, because the way it's a, it's a metaphor, so maybe we are other words like maybe combat. I don't know. Uh, but one way can be uh, to to think about how these metaphors are constructed into discourses. Uh, and to to have to to search the specific words uh, that are used to build these metaphors. Uh, maybe the words about wars, you say, uh, maybe soldiers, maybe uh, fight, uh, things like that. And after we can have a look at the specificities into this table and to to compare uh, if they are more or less specific from uh, one discourse to another. And for example, if you have here, you have a soldier here in this, here it is, uh, for example, six, and, uh, and uh, you, we can say that, for example, the, the metaphor of war was specific from uh, the first uh, discourse of Macron, but disappeared after, and uh, we have another metaphor of solidarity, at the same time, you can here. It's it. Can, I think, from my point of view, it can be manual manually built. Uh, uh, you have to understand how these metaphors are built, and after choose uh, words, uh, specific words of these metaphors, and do explore manual explorations in these tables to compare the specificity of uh, of the words. And uh, considering that these words can help you at the same time to to answer to the general question of, uh, of the metaphor. Okay, it's related to Sylvia's question uh, of of semantics. You could okay. also just construct a list, and then it goes through your corpus okay. and do some semantic tagging, and then you look for the semantic tags. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what I can, I couldn't present uh, today, but uh, maybe it can be another uh, another talk uh, when uh, next year. Is uh, I combine uh, the analysis of with Aramitech with another software called the Trop. And I can, uh, just can show you the first page. Uh, that is um, a semantic uh, tool that he has a um, categorization semantic categorizations. So you have a dictionary but linked to uh, semantic categories, for example, uh, uh, politics, media, and uh, subcategories. Maybe, I don't know, I don't remember, but maybe there are category of war, of uh, peace, or things like that, with the specific words linked to these categories. And in my work, in general, I, uh, I use these two softwares because they, 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 um, 
one com completes the others. Because with Eramutech, we just have a, a statistical representation with uh, forms without uh, any information except the, the grammatical uh, point of view. And with tropes, we have uh, more semantics uh, informations and also stylistics informations because it uses uh, another grammar from uh, Patrick Charodo with a uh, question of, uh, of style. And uh, the idea is to be able to combine the two approaches to uh, at the same time have a, a global representation of, uh, from a statistical point of view, but also to be able to use uh, semantic features when it's necessary to explore uh, uh, some hypotheses. Excellent, that helps a lot. Okay. And, and similar question briefly, I didn't like the prendre there. Can you take out empty words or function words automatically? Prendre, I mean, cell is nice, prendre is, you know, too, too empty. Can I take out empty words automatically or do I have to take them out by hand? Uh, you mean an empty words like a conjunction or a connector? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you have two, here you have two columns. Uh, you have uh, here the distinction is between active forms and supplementary forms. I don't know if it answers to your question. So here you have all the, what is called sep sep uh, articles, uh, pronouns. Excellent, uh, yeah, excellent, excellent. You can yeah. make the distinctions here. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. Question in the chat. Can There's the... another question in the chat from Chiara Preit, I think. Uh, we, yes, phraseology collocation, we have a function for that. Uh, uh, it? it is in the blah, blah, blah. here, here, uh, I don't know if I'll find it in English. Uh, well, yes, repeated segments, but here I don't know if it will be uh, here. You have uh, uh, Dono Compatriot, so it's a way to, uh, to answer to you, I think, to your questions. Uh, it's all the segments with more than two or three words, which can be five, uh, that are uh, have a frequency uh, uh, more than one. Uh, so here it's not maybe really interesting, but um, I worked on a more institu institutional corpora, for example, and you have uh, things like devant uh, délibéré, uh, more uh, procedural uh, informations. Uh, with uh, maybe five words, but are always uh, repeated in the, in, at the end of the document. And you, in fact, yes, you can extract. Uh, but here, it's, uh, it can be uh, the same answer uh, as before with metaphors. Uh, for this kind of function, I uh, always use, um, maybe I can show you in a future paper. Uh, where is it? Uh, uh, just if can give a minute, you can see on my computer. Uh, uh, because we have also the, the software called Lexico, maybe uh, you know Lexico 3, Lexico 3 and 5. And uh, he has a specific uh, function called the uh, repeated segment, which, which is uh, really, really strong. And for example, I worked with uh, about Islam, Islamism, Islamist, and I did that about, uh, here you can see fundamentalism, Islamist, here we have le fundamentalism, Islamist, uh, here uh, terrorism, Islamist, etc. Um, so I think Yamutek yeah, can help to, to extract uh, more phraseological uh, features, but I think Lexico is better to do that because it, it's a really specific uh, function. Um, and it helps you to, um, uh, yes, maybe I can show you uh, if I have two minutes. Um, because with Andre Salem that developed uh, uh, the, the lexico tool, we made a, a paper about uh, the semantic variation. 
And uh, for example, it was about the word enemy. Uh, and uh, we uh, uh, project this, this, uh, these collocations uh, linked to the temporality. Here it's uh, the, the different periods, one, two, three, four, five, uh, eight. And it's what, what, what was really interesting, but just uh, possible with Lexico, is to compare the evolution of, uh, of corpora according to the evolution of uh, phraseology or co-occurrence co about enemy. And, uh, for example, at the beginning, it was the enemy from the outside. Uh, after it was the enemy uh, inside and outside. And after it was the enemy uh, of uh, the Republic, of the revolution. And the, it's, a corporal, uh, it's a text linked to the French Revolution. Uh, and in fact, uh, you always have, for example, the word enemy, but uh, the, re the reference of the enemy uh, is uh, moving uh, with the temporality. And that you can uh, observe that with uh, the phraseological uh, dimension of, uh, of the word. So if I say that what, what in, we are trying to do in uh, our Institute of Digital Humanities uh, is uh, to, to build uh, uh, our own uh, tool, with all the functionalities we like in, uh, in the different uh, softwares. Because uh, in TROP, I said, uh, for example, you have a, a finger interesting with a emo text linked to the lexic of emotions, but with a specific dictionary, uh, but you don't have it in other uh, softwares. But in Yermitech, you have a, a hierarchical classification that it's really interesting to help with uh, thematic topic detection. Uh, so the, the idea is to combine uh, for the moment, my, my, I, I combine uh, some softwares, but the idea is to uh, build our own software uh, that have all the answers of this. Uh, of, uh, can okay, thank you for, well, uh, I think we are actually running out yeah. of time, but we got another question i hope it's a small question maybe we could try and answer it can the software yeah. help with aspects of literature review for instance extract opinions findings from taiwu or lorun dubato ju um i don't really understand literature review uh, uh but if the question it uh, it's a question about basically i think review art no, let's read it again. Can the software help with aspects of literature to, to review extract opinions, findings? So I, I guess it's like uh, yeah, review of the literature at the beginning of a paper or review articles and okay. identifying okay. Um, against or for. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I didn't want to talk about that, but maybe, yeah, maybe uh, with uh, the classification, you can extract the, uh, for example, you collect uh, a hundred of uh, scientific papers about a topic and uh, you make the uh, classification so you can have uh, the different uh, tendencies of the papers and with uh, characteristic text segments, you can extract maybe the, the strongest uh, quotations of each topic. And maybe, uh, yeah, maybe that can be a way to, uh, to extract the, the specificities of each, uh, yes, thematic of uh, the papers. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much and thank you for this interesting talk. I guess we will all go back now and start trying Iran attack. Okay. So let's thank Professor Julien Longhi again and uh, we hope we'll see you soon in person next yeah, year. I hope so. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye, thank you. Bye. <laughs>